today we're going to be checking in on the seeds I planted in the previous update video, including the seeds from the Chili Chum Seed Kit. We'll see how they're getting on. There's quite a bit of progress in there and also a little bit of a disaster which I will talk about in this video. I also have purchased something new that has gone into the shed. Didn't quite plan it right, so I've got a bit of work to do to try and make that work. So we're going to be doing all that this morning. Bit of a busy one, so let's get started. First things first, let's get into the shed and I'll show you what I've just purchased. We can see straight away exactly what I have done. I've gone and bought myself a new grow tent. The problem is, it is fairly large. If you have a look here, this is the Mars Hydro one that I was given to test by the Mars Hydro guys. Just to point out, this one here I bought with my own money. And uh, regardless, it doesn't matter even if I was given it, I'd still give my honest opinion of it. But this one here is quite a lot larger. It is a loft grow tent, which is why you see it's as short as it is. It's, it's about 20 centimeters shorter than the Mars Hydro, but fits in nicely in terms of the roof line. The problem is, it takes up most of my shed. So getting in and out of here is a bit of a mission because, yeah, this has pretty much taken up everything. So if we go outside for a second, we can actually see the shed is quite a bit bigger on that side than it is on that side. So what I need to do is shift everything from there over to the side and everything from there over to the side. Well, that's my intent anyway today. Hopefully everything will fit. You may have noticed down here some plants that I have left just out in the open. These are from my grow tent. These plants are the ones that came up from the seeds I brought back from Mozambique from the source that I smuggled back. I've taken two of the plants out and we'll show you what I've done with those in just a sec but I don't need these anymore and we can see on the other side here these were my seeds that I would planted for my uh, peri peri cross. None of them came up really not happy with that uh, still some time we've got some seeds in soil at the moment as well from the same batch so i'm sure we'll still have some success anyway let's have a look quickly in the grow tent before i get started in the shed here and i'll show you the progress we have in there okay so this is the grow tent it is getting very full which is another reason why i'm doing this today I have pretty much filled it up here and we need to get some plants out into the bigger grow tent. So these here are all my seedlings or seeds that I started in the previous update episode. We have had fantastic success in this soil. Not so great with these hydro ones and I have a few theories about that. Before we get too carried away in here I need to start clearing out the shed. I have to empty it out completely so I can move things across to that side over there, move everything that's over there on to the other side. Let me get going with that. I'll show you the end result. Unfortunately, I couldn't get everything done that I wanted to yesterday. It is Sunday today, which means I need to go and finish up inside there. Basically, I got a bit stuck with the placement for my two tents. Uh, the larger tent ended up opening from a different side than I thought it did, which meant I had to reposition everything. I'll show you what, I, what I'm talking about inside there, but it also meant that I ran out of time because I had to get out to my brother. It's his birthday soon and we had a bit of a celebration. And I kind of just rammed everything back inside the shed so it's a bit of a mess in there. Let's get inside and have a look and also sort it all out. You can see the mess that I have to go and take out. <laughs> I have to basically empty it all out again for the second time in two days, which is not a lot of fun. But let me give you the reason why. So this tent here is the bigger one, obviously. It was the one that was against the back wall over there uh, temporarily. And the intention was to have this up against the back wall there, uh, not up against this side. The problem is when I stuck it up against the back wall and I covered it with the tent, 
I realized that the door opens from this side, which means this would have been up against the wall on that side, which means I wouldn't be able to get in here, which obviously is not going to do. So I had to pull this whole thing apart again, just so I could turn it around because you cannot turn it around inside the shed. It's too big. And uh, that took a while. Put it back together, stuck it up against this wall. Then I did a measurement for that tent, the one at the back there. And it measures about two centimeters higher than the back of the wall, but obviously you can see I fitted it in. I managed to really squeeze it in there. And uh, yeah, I was just really excited about being able to do that. So thankfully we've got both tents in here. I have a little bit of space through here. I can't walk through here at the moment. So let me get going. Let me get this stuff out of here again and uh, try and get it all back in, in a way that leaves me a nice path through there. And we'll be able to get inside each of these tents and see what's going on with the plants. That is already looking so much better. I can actually walk into the place now. And uh, still a bit of work to do. I need to figure out how to tidy that up a bit neater. I'm thinking to mount some sort of, I don't know, something up there to hang them up horizontally maybe. It's the only other sort of free space I have here. Otherwise it's all kind of full up in here. So let's have a look around here. There's a shelf over here, but it doesn't get in the way too much of the grow tent over there. And uh, let's go have a look inside there. Okay, so what I've done in here is I've actually started using my grow lights that I got from IKEA last year. They did quite a good job actually, if you remember the season update videos from last year. They actually helped things grow pretty well. Now, let's talk about the problems we're having here. I think the issues we're having are twofold. Number one is the same issue I was having last year where the root just isn't burying itself. So we can see here, and there's a little bit of a fix that I'm gonna try. Um, I, I think it might be a bit late for this one, but what I'm gonna try is just split this open. Move that aside for now. Split this open, and we'll get the the root into the space. Let's see if we have any luck. The other issue, like I said before, is probably with a lack of humidity or lack of moisture in the air with these, because we can't keep those vents or the slots closed because they're constantly open. There's no there's no adjustable vent. It means that the seed covers actually go hard and don't allow the the seedling to come out of them. So that might be another reason, but I think to be honest, looking at this now and having a bit of a closer inspection, we can see that it looks just like the root is not is not doing what it should be doing. It's not going down into the uh, into the rock wall. So I'm not sure why that's happening. If you've watched my seed planting video you would have seen that i was burying these a lot deeper so it gave it more of a chance to put the shoots down i'll have a chat with yoko fatali because i know he uses these quite successfully but i don't know I'm, I'm quite tempted to just go back to soil but we'll see i i like the idea of these trays it's nice and compact and if they worked then it'd be so much easier to work with than the soil so we'll see how it goes. So let me know in the comments below if you're using the same system as this. Are you getting the same issue? Uh, it be interesting to see if it's, if it's not just me. Anyway. So here we have the soil started seeds. And what a big difference that is from the Vaxa started. Now I'm not saying that the Vaxa is bad for starting seeds because I have had good success with in the past. I'm gonna have to do some pruning. It's never the fun part because <laughs> you never want to kill off your plants but it needs to be done else you'll have problems like this one over here. Those are very keen to grow. That one there came up late so that will definitely be pruned and I'll show you my method for doing that on the next video. Let's go and have a look inside the big grow tent and see what's going on in there. <laughs> So, well, first things first, let's just point out over here, this is the ventilation system I bought. There are two extractor fans in there, one for each tent. 
and I've got some more of this coming because I don't think this will be enough but this is the venting I'll be using it'll be pulling air out of these tents and that will in effect pull fresh air back in and that's very important of course when you're growing you definitely need fresh air coming in the plants will use up all the co2 that's in here pretty quickly and basically you just need to replenish it by pulling in some more fresh air from outside so let's go in and have a look in here oh, i'm a bit tall for this but I'm sure i'll manage <laughs> okay let's start at the back here oh, this needs to come out the way so these are the two plants that I chose from the seeds I brought back from Mozambique and we can see if you have been watching my videos then you'll recognize this and you'll know that that is the controller that I use that I built that will create a ebb and flood system the nutrients and water are down below there I have this on a cycle at the moment of every I think it's two and a half hours right now and it floods for 30 seconds to just about that level over there i'm still using the backs and nutrients right now but i will switch over to something a bit better at a later stage we can see these plants are already showing some flowers about to pop open uh, these are about two months i would say two months old these plants and yeah they're doing quite well nice deep green color this light over here is doing very well so that's the spider farmer sf1000 and let's have a look over here so this here is another heated propagation tray that i have and nothing will be up yet so not a lot to see actually we've just had the pump turn on over there while we've been in here and that'll fill that up so that's what that noise is but down here i've planted a bunch of seeds if you want to go and see what i've planted in this new tray well actually i've split them up into two trays on my spreadsheet but you can go on the spreadsheet and have a look at exactly what i've put into these there are a few slots open which i have a few seeds coming that i'm going to be sticking in there but late in the season but should still be okay i have another small heater in here as well and that's just keeping the temperature at a, at a decent place as long as uh, it keeps it above freezing for now i'm happy but it's actually keeping it at about 18 degrees celsius so that's all good Here's my trusty T5 light. I'll use this on these seedlings once they start up. I haven't got it switched on yet, but once these do sprout, then they need some light. So that will be what I use in here. Time for me to head inside and get a bit warm. It is cold out here, a lot colder than it might seem to you guys, but it is cold. And I'm pretty happy with what we did in the shed and the season is really and truly underway. I need to do a little bit more tidying in there so that I can move around a bit easier but ultimately things are set up pretty nicely and it's now just a case of watching our plants grow. I wanted to make a quick announcement I have started a second YouTube channel so if you do follow me on my other social media you would see already that I've started the second channel. I actually started it back in September but I only uploaded some videos now. I was thinking what to use it for but it's pretty obvious what I'm going to use it for now. All my automation videos will be going to that channel instead of them being on this main channel. I obviously understand that not everybody that watches what I do on this main channel around the gardening and the source making is going to be really interested in some of the techie stuff I do. Uh, you know I, I accept that that's fine so what i've done is just made that second channel so i can move all that sort of content over to that side there'll be some other content there as well some of my longer videos maybe i uh, will put onto the second channel we'll see we'll see how we use it but for now it's going to be all the beginner's guide to automation videos they will all be going over to that second channel so if you are following that series make sure you subscribe to chili chump 2 there'll be a link down below and up above here as well Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And until then, stay spicy.